the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Good evening, and welcome to this United Even Apart Church of Santa Fe's Christmas Eve service. Wherever you are in this world, wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcomed here, even apart with the United Church. We're very glad you've joined us for worship, for prayer, for wonderful music, for the sharing of communion, and especially the sharing of God's story and God's light tonight. As we begin our time together, just some ways of preparing for this time together. One is, if you happen to have a cell phone that might ring during this time, make sure the ringer is turned off. Same is true for your watch or anything else that might distract you from this wonderful time of being in God's presence. And the second thing is uh, the service will end with, or the service includes the sharing of communion, God's bread and cup. And so if you haven't done so already, uh, please get something that's for you symbolizes bread and symbolizes the cup so that together, even apart, we might be able to share God's communion and know that all are welcomed at God's table, even as, God, even as all were welcomed at that stable long ago and far away. And finally, the service concludes with the sharing of God's light. We will conclude, even virtually, with the lighting of the candles from the Advent wreath. Now, if we were all together in, a, in the sanctuary, we would be passing that light from one, another, from one to another. We can't do that this year, But I hope that you've got a couple candles handy and light one as we light the Advent wreath and hold the other one until the very end of the service and light it from your own Christ and light that second candle from your own Christ candle as we light the Christ can as we light our candle from the Christ candle here at the church and then share that light. Share it with those with whom you might share life in your household, but most of all share that light through your life through your love, through your care for God's people, both on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, but also into this year ahead. We're very glad you've joined us for worship tonight. We hope you'll join us in other ways in the coming year. If you'd like to find out more about the the United Even Apart Church of Santa Fe, go to our website, unitedchurchofsantafe.org, for the most up-to-date information. And again, Merry Christmas, and we're glad you've joined us. And now, let us join together in worship, as we do every time this church gathers, even apart, for worship. And that is by taking into our lives God's gifts, the gifts that God yearns to offer us this night and throughout our whole lives. So let us breathe in deeply the gift of God's peace that passes all understanding. Let us breathe in God's hope for us and for all creation. Let us breathe in God's joy that overcomes all despair and sadness. And let us breathe in God's deep abiding love, born anew this night, born into our world, born into our lives. Let us gather to worship God and give thanks for the gifts of this Christmas Eve. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All nations shall stream to it. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord.
Hear the promise of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the child of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O day spring, come and cheer our spirits by your advent here. Love stir within the womb of night, and death's on shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Why is tonight different from all other nights? This, this is, is the eve, eve of Christ's birth, when, when we light all the candles on the Advent wreath. Each week before Christmas, as, as the world moved into deeper darkness, we lit another candle to proclaim God's light coming into our world. What is the meaning of the candles? Each, Each candle represents the true gifts of Christmas, peace, hope, joy, and love. They have reminded us how to prepare our lives for Christmas. As we begin this holy night, let us light these candles and open our lives to receive God's gifts and our hearts to share those gifts with others. O come, desire of nations, bind all peoples in one heart and mind. Make envy, strife, and quarrels cease. Fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. I light this candle for the coming of peace. I light this candle for the coming of hope. I light this candle for the coming of joy. I light this candle for the coming of love. Stir up your power and come, O oh Lord. Come, Come with, with your, your peace and, and the promise of plowshares and, and pruning hooks. Come, Come with, with your hope and the vision of lions and lambs. Come, Come with your joy that, that bursts forth, forth like streams in the desert. Come with your love that can change our world and our lives. 
Stir up your power and come, O Lord, so your love might be born in our world. Hear the good news of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was in the beginning with God. All things were made through it, and without it was not anything made that was made. In the Word was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We light, we light this candle for the, for the coming, coming of Christ, Christ the, the light that shines in, in the darkness. darkness.
There are so many ways we tell this story. We tell it through song, song from all around this world. We tell it through symbols, like the poinsettia or the nativity scene or the Christmas tree. We tell it in different voices with different accents. We tell it from different perspectives. But it is always the same story, the same story. And tonight we will hear that story again, thanks to the wonders of technology, as read by a beloved member of United Church of Santa Fe who lives on the East Coast. For the last number of years, Ted Rogers has shared the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke at the late service on Christmas Eve, when he and his wife Betsy have been a part of the congregation. And even though they weren't able to come to Santa Fe this Christmas, Ted is going to offer us that story from far away and long ago, but also here and now. Ted? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward all. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them in, unto heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying that was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Word of God, word of life. and best of the stars of the morning. Dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star of the east, the horizon adorning.
side where our infant redeemer is laid brightest and best of the stars of the morning dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid star of the east the horizon adorning guide where our infant redeemer is laid cold on his cradle the dew drops are shining low lies his head with the beasts of the stall angels adore him in slumber reclining maker and monarch and savior of all brightest and best of the stars of the morning dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid star of the east the horizon adorning guide where our infant redeemer is laid the universe is made of stories writes poet muriel rukeyser not of atoms the universe is made of stories not of atoms what a wonderful idea especially on a Christmas Eve. Now, those of you who know me know that I am a firm believer in science. I was raised in a family of scientists. I studied science. I thought I was going to major in science in college. And right now, for the last 30 plus years, I've lived just below 30 miles, 35 miles below Los Alamos. So I understand the power of atoms. And certainly, like many of you over the last nine months, I've come to appreciate science even more. As medical doctors and scientific researchers have rushed to try to find a vaccine, using the best knowledge they have, their experimentation with genetic codes and RNA and all those things that we learn from medical science. Everywhere from atoms to molecules to cells. But tonight, tonight on Christmas Eve, I come down on the side of that poet. The universe is made of stories, not of atoms. Because tonight we have just shared that powerful story of this night. A story that was told and lived 2,000 years ago, but still gives us life in the year of our Lord, 2020. A story that is, has been told in so many different kinds of ways, through song, through folk tales. A story that begins with the master storyteller, Luke, focusing us first on the great hall of Caesar Augustus, way off in faraway Rome. Caesar Augustus so powerful that he can command the whole world to leave home and go be registered someplace else. But within seven verses, seven short verses, that master storyteller Luke takes us from the great halls of the gold and glitter of Caesar to a stable in Bethlehem to focus in not on the great and powerful Caesar or his minions, but on that poor couple, a carpenter named Joseph and his wife, Mary, who have traveled for 70 miles because Caesar off in Rome has said, all the world must be registered, which meant that even though Mary was nine months pregnant, and even though they had everything ready back in Nazareth, the diapers, the cradle, the midwife probably, they had to pack up and walk 70 long miles, not even to the big city of Jerusalem, but down to the little town of Bethlehem, five miles south. And there they found no room, no room for them, for their baby, 
And yet that's where Luke asks us to focus. Where they ended up in probably a cow shed, a cow barn. And the baby's first crib was a cow's feed trough. That's the story. Just the first seven verses. And then it goes on and it tells a wonderful story about angels and heavenly choruses and mystified shepherds who are being sung to by the greatest, greatest choir of all time and who, because of that, leave their sheep behind and hightail it into Bethlehem to find that child in that cow shed. And then they praise God as they go home. Wonderful part, the second part of this story of all those shepherds and angels rejoicing in all that new life. But tonight, tonight, I invite us to linger a bit with the first seven verses of that story that Ted read so well. Those first seven verses that, yes, begin in the great and powerful hall of Caesar Augustus, ruler of the whole world, but end up in a barn in Bethlehem. Because Luke takes us and asks us not to focus where we think power and glory might be, not with the rulers of the world, certainly not with the petty despots, but instead in a barn in Bethlehem. A barn in Bethlehem because there was no room for that young couple anywhere else. And maybe there was no room for that young couple because, in fact, Bethlehem was so crowded. But maybe there was no room for Joseph and Mary because they weren't from Bethlehem. They were from Nazareth, way up north. They were from another region, the upcountry region of Galilee. They spoke with an accent. They probably looked a little bit different than those Judeans. And they probably couldn't afford the Hilton or the El Dorado. There was no room for them in Bethlehem, nor for their child. This young couple whose world had continued to be turned upside down. Because that's where the story also leads. It leads from powers and principalities, world events over which Mary and Joseph had absolutely no control whatsoever. And they think they're going in one direction. They've got their plans for their life together and all of that for the child to be born. And then all of a sudden, because of things beyond their control, everything is turned upside down. And they have to leave all that behind separated from family and loved ones, the birth not being what they thought it would be or where it would be or the people that they would count on and rely on not being able to be there. All happening within that first section, those first seven verses. I invite us to linger with this story, this part of the story, this night. I invite you to linger with it even into the new year ahead, because Lord only knows what this new year will bring. And if it's anything like this last year, it is going to be a year very similar to what Mary and Joseph experienced, a year where life keeps getting turned upside down. And we keep having plans that we make, and then we have to remake. A year that seems has seemed at times like completely out of control, just like it was for Mary and Joseph. A year of a lot of loss, loss of time together with family and friends, loss of all of our plans for our own futures, loss of job, security, place. Linger with this story from 2,000 years ago, my friends, because it is our story as well. It is not just something that happened long ago and far away. But we live in a world that keeps getting turned upside down. And we know that better at the end of 2020 than probably any of us have ever known before. 
And I don't know about you, but Christmas of 2020, I need this story, this story from the Gospel of Luke, those first seven verses of, its sec- of the second chapter of a world being turned upside down for those two people, Mary and Joseph, because it's the world that we live in too. I need this story of two people not finding room in this world for them, either because things were so crowded or because of their accent or because of where they come from or their economic status. There was no room for them because even now in our world, there is often no room for such people. Still. We need this story of such a shadowed time, living under the empire, living in a world that has forces, political and otherwise, that are completely beyond our control. Living in a world, oftentimes, that feels chaotic, feels sad. Living in a world, even without the pandemic for some of us, living in a time that has been strange and hard because of what's gone on in our own lives, the loss of loved ones, our job, our security. That's the story we tell this night. And yes, it is a story from 2,020 years ago, but it's also the story of 2020 this year. And it is a story, my friends, that within those seven first verses, by the time you get to the seventh verse, we're reminded that God is still there. She gave birth to her firstborn child and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Within seven verses, Luke has taken us from the power of Caesar to the true power of God breaking into a chaotic, shadowed, hard world. And that happened not only 2,020 years ago, it still happens and can happen in our world in 2020. And so my friends, ponder this story, linger with it, not just on Christmas Eve, but in the day ahead and in the year ahead. And remember, it is the central story of God's promise to us. That not only long ago and far away, but in our shadowed, often chaotic, turned upside down world we live in now, with all of its uncertainty and fear and plans that haven't worked out and probably still won't work out, with all of its loss and grief and hardship, God is still born. Light is still born. Light that shines in the darkness, that shone in the darkness of 2,000 years ago and still shines in the darkness and shadows of our world now. Light that still shines and the darkness has not and will not ever overcome it. That's the story we tell about long ago and far away this night. And it's a story we can still still tell about here and now in your life and in my life and in the life of this old world. Light is still born. Life is still born. Love is still born. God is is still here. And we call the name Emmanuel, God with us, this night and every night. That's our story. Thanks be to God. Amen.
My friends, the story of this feast is a story of light that overcomes darkness, love that overcomes fear, life that overcomes even death itself. The story we tell is not the story of Christmas Eve, filled with angels singing and shepherds praising. Instead, it is a story of 13 people gathered in a darkened room in a shadowed time. A story not of hallelujah choruses and songs of peace on earth, but instead of cries and whispers and fear in the night. But it is the story, my friends, of light that still overcame darkness, of love that still overcame fear, and life that still overcame even death itself. When we come to this table, we share that story. That on the night of betrayal and death, not in the little town of Bethlehem, but the big city of Jerusalem, not at the beginning of his life, but at the lit very end, the one we know as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sat at table with those disciples, one who would betray, one who would deny, and all the rest who would fall away. But in the midst of the meal, he took bread, and when he had blessed it and given thanks for it, he broke the bread, and he gave it to them, to all of them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, and again, when he had blessed it and given thanks for it, he gave it to them, and he said, Take, drink, this cup is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant, poured out for all people, for the forgiveness of sins and the newness of life. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, my friends, whenever we come to this table, even when we're apart, whenever it is that we share bread and cup, however it is we share bread and cup, we do so to remember, to remember that starry night long ago in that little town of Bethlehem, filled with light and angels and hope, and also that shadowed night in the big city of Jerusalem, filled with fear and shadow. But we, rem we remember most of all the one who overcomes as he overcame all of that shadow, that fear, and even death itself. And so it is in that spirit I invite us to keep this feast this night, to share these gifts, to share the gifts you have of bread and cup. Following the prayer of consecration, I will offer the bread to Ben and offer the cup, offer the bread to Ben, and I invite you at that time also to share the bread. That will be followed by a time of a, a plain song, plain chant song, and then we will share the cup. And no matter what elements you're using, no matter where you are, no matter what journey brought you to bread and cup, or to this night, know that you are welcomed. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcomed at this table. In that spirit, let us give thanks to God and welcome one another wherever we might be. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as God led Mary and Joseph, shepherds and wise ones to the stable in Bethlehem, so, so God, God leads, leads us to this, to this table, table tonight. tonight. As God opened their eyes to see Christ's light, even in the shadows of their world, may God open, open our, our eyes to, to see, see that, that same light in, in these, these gifts, gifts and, and in, in our, our world. As God offered them warmth and love through the life of the child and the lives of each other, may, may we, we know, know that, that warmth and love through the sharing of this meal. Let us give thanks and welcome one another to this table. It is spread for you, for me, for all people, that we might know God's light in the journeys of our lives. Let us be together in prayer. Gracious God, on that first Christmas, you offered this world the gift of your love in human form with a human heart and hands. Hear our prayers of thanks 
for all the ways we have known that love this season. Through the beauty of your creation on a starry winter night, through the hands and hearts of others, through the strength and courage you have given us this past year, and the hope you offer us this night, hear our prayers of thanks. You who were born into a world that had no room for you, nor for your message of love and life, hear to our prayers for our sisters and brothers who long for your love and ours, for those afflicted in body, soul, or mind, for those who grieve the loss of loved ones or the loss of hope, for those who live behind the walls of nursing homes refugee camps, and prisons. You who were as needy as a newborn infant, dependent on the kindness of strangers, especially this Christmas, we thank you for all who offer such kindness for hospital staffs, and first responders, grocery clerks, farm workers, we thank you for all persons upon whom our lives depend and for all who have shown us kindness this year. As you have so blessed us, we pray, bless now these gifts of bread and cup, and bless our lives with your transforming love, that we too might offer our hands and our hearts in love for your children, our brothers and sisters. We pray this in the name of the child of Bethlehem, Emmanuel, God with us, who taught us to pray to you with boldness, courage, and most of all trust, saying, our Bethlehem, Creator, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, and blessed are we who are hungry enough to come to this table. This is the bread of life, broken and given for all people. Take, eat, and give thanks. This is the cup of the new covenant. May we drink of it deeply.
Let us join in the prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for the gifts of this night, bread for our journey, hope for our world, and most of all, the blessing of your light in our lives. Send us now into this night in courage and peace to share your love and be your light for others. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our praise to the child of Bethlehem. In the beginning was the Word, proclaimed the Gospel of John, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The Word became the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never and will never overcome it. My friends, we gather in the darkness of this night, and through our lives and through our words, we proclaim that truth that the child of Bethlehem brought God's light into this world for all people, that the child of Bethlehem brought God's love into the most shadowed of places, that the child of Bethlehem continues to offer us that light and that life, that we might offer light and life to our world. So it is in that spirit that we close this service with the lighting of our candles wherever we may be. In a moment, I will take the light from the Christ candle on the Advent wreath. And if we were all gathered together in this wonderful sanctuary, we would then pass that light from one to another. But since that's not possible this particular Christmas Eve, I invite you to light your candle, to light your candle both with the candle that you might be using but most of all, to light your candle with your life, with your life as we go forth into this new year ahead, offering God's love and God's light for the sake of God's people, for the sake of all creation. And once we have lit our candles, then we will join together in singing the most beloved of all Christmas carols, Silent Night, Holy Night. And if you choose, wherever you may be, on the refrain of each verse, raise your candle high to show forth that light. And so my beloved friends, wherever we might be on this dark night, take the light of Christ, take it into your hearts and into your lives, and take it into this world. As together we join together we join in singing Silent Night, Holy Night, and Hold God's Light High.
And now, my beloved friends, wherever you may be in this world, may you be in this world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Honor all creation. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of that Spirit be with us all. Go in peace, be in peace, and a blessed Christmas to you all. Amen. <laughs>